Oh, 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 oh me. the brain jump. I got this. I got this. Mr. Austin Lenny is in the house, but he is sitting on the laurels, unready to introduce ourselves. You guys don't need an introduction. You know who we are. I'm Anthony Vecino, and we have the Mr. Austin, uh, actually, Austin, Mr. California Lenny with us. Dude, He's, that hurts me so bad. Yeah, and, 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 uh, and it's on so, so many levels. levels. Hey, hey hold on, hold on, hold on. I got my cowboy <laughs> boots on, though. I got to keep my boots. <laughs> actually, actually, the thing that a lot of people don't realize is that Tahoe is, like, right across the border to Nevada, and that's pretty much Texas. Dude, are you kidding? I can be in Nevada in five minutes. Like, exactly. and, and, like, people don't understand. It's more cowboy than you think up here. Yeah. It's super cowboy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Mr. 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 Austin does not know what the topic is. I'm going to drop it on him in 13.2 seconds. But before I do, he was he was telling me before we went live that he's been a little bit grumpy lately. It's been a little bit of a, uh, what's the a downy Debbie? A Debbie I think downy. I think we'll just call it entrepreneurship. I think that yeah. like that I mean, kind of I, yeah yeah. But let's <laughs> let's take a moment. Let's get let's get Austin out of his funky mood. And uh, give me give me the number one thing that you're grateful for. I literally, my clients are like they're happy. They're making more money than they've ever made. Their family's happy. Their spouses are happy. I have the best clients in the world. I'm dead serious. Like I've never. So ever since May, every month has been better. They're making money. Like really, life is great. I'm living you know, working with my mentor in this beautiful hotel. I'm literally uh, 200 feet from Lake Tahoe staring at snow covered mountains. So life is, life is pretty amazing. I'm not going to lie to you. Well, that's the perfect segue into today's topic. When we're talking about your clients and the fact that they're making more money than they ever have since, you know, whenever. Um, The thing I want to talk about today is skills. Specifically, um, a couple of weeks ago, I made a post that said, you'll never scale beyond your skills. Upgrade your skills, upgrade your life. And specifically what I want to talk about, and this is one of the things that you help people do with you know, your clients is you help them upgrade their skills. So my question is, what are those skills? What are the most important skills to upgrade if we want to upgrade our life? Straight up, communication. Seriously, uh, communication. But, but here's the deal. Intentional communication. What's that mean? Yeah, what's that mean? Give me, give me some so, so, so if you can enter a room and you can hold, so a lot of my clients, especially ones that are more of the introvert style, they walk into a room and they think they have nothing to offer, right? Like, well, like, and they're searching for stories. And I always use your example where you have a list of stories out. So when you get on a thing and they love that. So I always use your, thank you for that. Um, <laughs> the, the second, the second thing, I steal everybody's stuff. So the second thing <laughs> is, is, is that uh, I got in trouble with Maddie one time about that. That's for another okay. podcast. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> but, 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 but what's interesting, right. Is that here's, here's where I, here's where I think it goes wrong. They think that it's gotta be about real estate. So one of my coaching clients is in multifamily. He's kind of shy, but he used to work high up in golf, like for like courses, like superintendent. And I'm like, Hey, like, do you not think that like 90% of real estate investors want to talk about golf? Like, so you have something to talk to them about. And so once you highlight to them and they can properly articulate a story instead of standing in front of somebody and going, "Mm, uh, I don't know what to say. You like, you know, like, that's when they have those three stories to hit on then they properly introduce themselves. And once the ball gets rolling, it's really, it's good to go after that. Oh my God. This, so the other day, Dan and I, um, my partner in Victus, we were sitting down with um, these people who specialize in public relations, specifically for the mall of America. And they were coming in and we were talking, giving them, they were giving us some, some feedback on how to you know penetrate into the world of mass media. And it's really interesting because the, the lady, she asks, um, so tell me about yourself, you know, and I go into my spiel about my story and everything like that. But I have my story like so figured out at this point and how to tell it, not just what to say, but how to tell it. And it was, it was fascinating because afterwards she goes, that was amazing. She's like, you know, before when I came in here, like I have, I'm not, a, she's like, I'm not a business person. And I came into this meeting, like not knowing what to expect. And you have this expectation of like people who are in, you know, real estate and capital 
uh, services and like it's going to be this one thing she's like and you just like completely undid that for me so like with that story she's like you lit up like the way you lit up as you told that story and it wasn't just about money it was about all this other stuff and she's like i'm like so intrigued to know more about your story now because of that and as and it was fascinating because like and you know this you know how much i've practiced in the last year and a half of what is my story not just like how to tell it to impress people, but how to make people want to connect. Mm-hmm. And that's like the most important skill is like, how do you communicate in a way that connects? And I struggled with that so hard. And I still do, you know, I, I have a couple of stories now that I you're, lean on. You're, you are, I would say that you're 20 times better than mm-hmm. when we first talk, when we first talked to each other. Mm-hmm. I mean, like your communication skills, you've practiced, you've went to seminars like it's really the way you present it is is like light years and and that shows like super important. Yeah, and then I, I, my buddy that I play tennis with every week, Brandon, he he follows along the podcast and he watches the videos and he's like, man, the the difference between your videos in January versus your videos now is like it's night day. It's like it's it's incredible just how much you progressed and it's the same thing as you're saying here. And now I'm sharing this not to like pat myself on the back, but to point out like. It is a process. Communication, how to speak, not just like what to say, but how to say it. It's a skill in how you stand in a room, how you present yourself in a room, how you move through the world. It's so important. And yet at any given moment, we're communicating a million different things, consciously or unconsciously. But the problem is most people have never stopped to consciously reflect on all the different things that they're communicating and how they can improve that. And because of that, they they go through life as mediocre communicators. Well, it's interesting because uh, if if you don't know me, and this this just happened to me yesterday with a manager that's here. She's from uh, Serbia. Um, she's been in the states like a couple of years. She thinks that I'm upset with her, and mm-hmm. I'm like, and like Cassie's like, Austin's never upset. Like, he, yeah, he might be upset, but it's like two seconds and he's done. But what she doesn't realize is when I'm sitting down and I'm speaking to her, I have thirty things going on in my head, and it makes me seem like I'm upset, and so. That's something that I have to work on as well, right? And so just because I spent 20 years in hospitality and I've talked to people from all over the world and and everything, I have what the kids are calling it these days, I have a resting bitch face. And it's not that I'm unhappy. It's not that I'm anything. It's that I'm, I'm nine steps ahead of the conversation, right? And so I have to learn how to bring it back sometimes and, and be in that moment, which I am very good at when I'm when I'm communicating properly. But just... Um, to, to kind of button this communication thing up. So guys, I'll give you a little trick I do. It's from the restaurant business. Um, and don't tell me that you can't do this too, because you can't. So what I do when I see somebody in the first minute is I look at everything that they're wearing, everything, their purse, their hat, their shirt, everything. So let's say a guy, I wake up and he has a Nebraska thing. Okay, look, dude, I don't watch a lot of football but I know Scott Frost from the nineties was the best Heisman football player. I'm like, man, you know, that's Scott Frost. He was a sure, he was a hell of a quarterback. And in that moment, I, I relate to them and I become them and they drop their defenses. So then we have an equal conversation. So, you know, it's called mirroring. It's called whatever you want to call it. But, but, but in that moment, find something, you know, Hey, where are you from? Well, I'm from Denver, Colorado. Well, guess what? My uncle lives there. It's amazing. Boom. Five (laughs) seconds. We're there. Like it's that, that quick. Yes. Yeah. Finding, finding the commonality. Right. And, and you touched on something before about your resting bitch face. And it's something that I have been trying to be increasingly aware of for myself. And, and you actually mentioned this at one point, but you didn't mention it in this context, but I took it away and I was like, is that true? And I took it to some other people like that's true. And it was, a, you, you said something flippantly, which was like, you intimidate people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, wait, what I do. Um, and it turns out I do, I, I do intimidate people and I don't know, I, I, I understand why that is. And I have to con- be conscious of that fact of how I present myself has the ability to intimidate people. And so self-awareness is a huge part of communication. But if you look at it from like the t- three technical aspects to communicate effectively with the world, you have to be a good writer. You have to be a good speaker and you have to have a good uh, understanding of body language. Those are the three ways that we predominantly communicate in the universe. And so you've heard me talk about writing before and why that's so important on the speaking front. It is so important to have story 
memories of yourself and how to connect them to different topics. Because listen, the first time I tell a story, it sucks. The hundredth time I tell it, it's actually maybe worth listening to. And so if you want to be like an engaging speaker, do you want to go to parties and like actually captivate people? Like practice your stories, get in front of a mirror, look at your body language, look at how you're delivering it, tweak it and, and be okay sucking. But um, just know that nobody is like, the first time anybody tells a story, it's usually not very good. And then focus on the body language. How you actually, how, you, how are you showing up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. And energy is a big thing. I understand that people match your energy. So on that skill factor, I think one of the skills that I think is super important is just um, to ask questions. Like seriously, mm -hmm. you know, and, and ask questions. And I'm going to show you why this is so important. And it was a long week in Florida that taught me this. And uh, there's that's a couple a really of good skill, by the way. I just want to give you kudos real quick. I, I wouldn't have even thought about that. That's a really good. So, skill. so the reason I say that is, as a coach, I used to be so inclined to jump in and give them the advice, but yet I hadn't asked the questions to, to know where we even need to start. And so, instead of letting them kind of lay the story out to me and being able to start, you know, six months in advance or like farther along in the scenario, I was just starting where I thought, and then we wouldn't get anywhere. And so by asking questions, you really create a space where you can get a full understanding, understand it of the, the concept, why they feel that way and stuff like that. And man, I'm telling you, the number one thing that people say about me is that you ask amazing questions. I swear to God, it's, I just got it told twice today. So I didn't know that was a skill, but apparently it's it's something that I've learned over time. No, that's a, that's a beautiful one. I wouldn't have thought of this, but now that you brought it up, I, I have another layer I want to add on top of this delicious cake, which is most people, myself included, are inclined when we're in a conversation with other people to, even when we don't understand what's being communicated, to just agree out of fear of looking stupid or looking like the only person in the room is not catching on. And so if we're in a business negotiation or we're talking about something kind of complex, let's say, or even it could be simple, you just don't get it. Like we're talking to investors all the time about investing and that's scary and hard. And, and most people, they just go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I get it. And they don't get it. And so when it comes to asking questions, what I would say is keep, like develop the skill of continuing to ask questions until you understand. Don't just ask once. And if you don't understand, go, oh, okay and think, I'll just Google it later and find the answer. And sit there and keep asking the question over and over and over until you understand it. Because a lot of times what you'll discover is like, if you're in a group setting and um, everybody else is like, oh yeah, yeah, I get this. And you're like, I don't understand. Can you explain this again? If you keep digging deeper, you'll find that at the end, somebody usually comes up to you and you're like, oh, I'm so, I'm so thankful you asked that because I know how to be here. <laughs> but, but people are so afraid of looking stupid. <laughs> No, it's the truth. Me too. I'm, I'm like the worst. If you're if you're spending fifty thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars, I would sure as hell hope that you know what you're what you're what you're trying to understand here. Like, guys, yeah. guys, you do understand that part of sales training for savages and people that don't care about your feelings is to confuse you with numbers and shit, so you don't understand. So you just do it anyway. <laughs> so make sure that you ask questions because I'm telling you this: if you ask enough questions, you're probably going to figure out if the guy that you're wanting to invest with or do business with actually knows what the hell they're talking about. You know, we, we've heard the adage, the confused mind says no. And that's, that's great theory, but it's not true. Most people are very confused and they say yes out of fear of looking stupid. Mm -hmm. And that's just the truth. And so, uh, man, this is a, that's a really good skill. Ask better questions because if you want better answers, ask better questions and then keep asking questions until you understand. The goal is to understand, not just to be accepted, right? Like, if you don't really understand what the other person is saying, this is an opportunity for communication to go deeper, right? Not just one of the things that are my biggest pet peeve. Not that's a fucking absolute. It's stupid talking absolutes. But one of the things that really annoys me is when I'm talking and I'm explaining something to somebody and they just go, "Yep, uh, yep, yep," and they're like saying it really quickly before I've even finished what I'm really saying. So it's clear to me that they couldn't possibly truly understand what I'm saying because I haven't actually said yet. Mm. Yeah. And one of the, and I'm going to leave you, we're going to get out of here, but I want to leave you with this skill. This is the hardest one. 
especially for men, not acting in your ego. Guys, your ego is writing checks that your butt can't cash. And you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing, trying to prove a point to somebody that doesn't even matter. <laughs> I think Alex Holmes he's had the greatest fucking it's, thing. It's, he, it's like that whole your your uh, your your working to so that you can afford to buy things you hate to impress people you hate. <laughs> <laughs> he said today he tweeted it, put it on Instagram. Nobody in front of you is thinking about you. The only the only way that they're the only way that here, I'll read it to you verbatim. Hold on. I'll read it, I'll read it to you verbatim because it's so fire. No, no one ahead of you is thinking about you except shade throwing as uh as an omission of inferiority. Yeah, yeah, no, it's super true. I mean <laughs> it's so there, money dude there, there's so there's so much truth in that state in that concept it is true like ego's a fucking weird thing but it can be used for positive if exactly you can, if you can control it because there is a piece of your ego that's needed to scale a business and to do things that normally would scare the shit out of you you have to believe that you can too so it's this delicate dance that I mean, that could be a whole episode on its own self, right? There. Yeah, I think we could do a whole episode just on the ego because uh, the ego wants you to stay safe and secure and not be put yourself put yourself out there, or it wants you to put yourself out there in a way that you get to posture. But the, the truth of entrepreneurship is something a whole lot less sexy and a whole lot scarier for the ego. Mm -hmm. No, it's, just, it's it's the truth. So, guys. Get the skills to pay the bills. Sorry, I had to do it. It was in my head. I couldn't get it out of it. <laughs> but, but make sure that I truly believe anybody that's out there that's listening when you're young, be far less worried about how much money you're making when you're getting started and be worried about how many skills you can obtain. Oh, my God. Yes. Yep. Leave it on that. So Leave it on that. Maybe, maybe the homework for this week then is to go and audit yourself and say, what are the skills that I need to level up to take to the next level? Whether those are like the communication, asking questions skills, or it's more self-awareness, how am I going to get out of my own way? How am I going to understand my strengths and weaknesses? Or maybe it's more tactical. It's like, I need to level up my fucking math skills because I can't I can't add two plus two. And that's not going to serve me in a, in a business world. You know, figure out what those skills are. Create a game plan for how you're going to go level them up and then get to work. What are you doing? You have all the time in the world. Now stop wasting it. I love it. All right, guys, share it with a friend, uh, send it their way, and we'll talk to you next time.